Welcome to Sea View in North Belfast. It's been an incredible 2021 for the Northern Ireland women's side. They're hoping to end the year on a high with another victory. They host North Macedonia in tonight's World Cup qualifier. Kickoff is five minutes away at Sea View. And there's the team making their way across for the anthems. Led, of course, by Marissa Callahan. Such an accomplished performance on Thursday. 11 nil winners in that game. Significantly boosted the, the squad's goal difference in the group. They're currently third behind England and Austria in Group D. Big games coming up, of course, in April against that pair. But tonight, the mission will be keeping the qualification bid on track. A seller to see you as we await the national anthems. Starting for the national anthem of Northern Ireland. Seaview has become a fortress for this squad. They're unbeaten here in over two years in competitive fixtures. And let's look at the home lineup. Unsurprisingly, it's the same starting 11 for Northern Ireland. McKenna and Holloway opened their international accounts away from home on Thursday. The usual suspects, Furness and McGill, will be eager to add to their international tally this evening. Three changes for the visitors. Boeska switches from left back to right back. The captain, Makiska, will play in a more defensive role and Mustafa will hope to bolster the attack. Marissa Callahan is ready, as are the match officials there from Israel. Alongside me on co-commentary this evening, former international Gail Redmond, there's an expectation we're going to see goals tonight. Do you expect we uh, will be disappointed in that regard? 
definitely I think so I, I'm only speaking for myself uh, yes I think we're expecting to see goals especially you know from the last result and you know there's an expectation now like you talked about you know that we haven't lost here and uh, to finish out the year just with a, a big victory would be fantastic bit of a statement of intent from Kenny Shields picking the same starting 11 when previously when you look at the, the games um, two months ago he, he said he was going to play everyone in the squad this time he's going for his strongest 11 is that the right call I think so you know we talk about consistency but we also talk about expectation and intent and you know he knows he can get goals out of that team and I think if we start well and we score early then it should be a really good night last time we were here of course was that stunning 2-2 draw against Austria it almost ended up in a in a famous famous victory but for an injury time uh, goal when you look at the stadium how important has the atmosphere been in the way that North Ireland have played here over the past 12 months? Yeah, we've talked about it. The guards have talked about it. It's the 12th man, you know what I mean? It, it's what spurs them on. I think they just get such an electric feeling when they walk out and the stadium is packed and, you know, they're seeing familiar faces and, and I think that just drives them forward. How do you get the balance between wanting to put on a show for all those supporters and getting the job done? Well, I think I saw tonight, you know, in the warm-up, uh, everyone seems to be extremely focused. Uh, they know exactly what they need to do. Uh, they know they have to move the ball quickly, uh, get this team out of shape uh, and hurt them in the final third. And um, I think if they start well here, move the ball, they'll do just that. Almost ready to get underway here at Seaview. As the visitors, North Macedonia, who kick off. It was a horrible lunchtime for them at home. A real game to forget. 11 goals conceded. Although it's not their biggest uh, defeat. That was back in 2014. A 15-0 loss to Italy. But 8 of the starting 11 have been given the coaches thumbs up again for, for this one. And Northern Ireland will hope it's a similar type of performance and a similar type of result. Here's Simone Miguel. Tending to play it inside to Wade. The captain wasn't taking any chances. Maleska at the back. You mentioned the, the, the turnaround here. It's over two years since that 6-0 defeat against Norway. It was the first game of, of Kenny Shields' reign. But since then, in competitive internationals, Northern Ireland haven't lost a game. It was that one reverse, 1-0 uh, defeat against uh, Scotland here in the friendly. But apart from that, when it's mattered, this team is certainly stepped up first touch for Jackie Burns pretty much an onlooker uh, on Thursday concentration key as well Northern Ireland of course got off to the fast start in the away fixture many of these supporters will have come here hoping for plenty of goals it might not work out that way but you never know in international football Throwing's going to be taken by Yankowska. Her second game in the group. And there's a player down from uh, North Macedonia. There was a clash with uh, Kirsty McGuinness, I think, and it's Mustafa who's felt the full force of that. Yeah, you just see Rachel Furness coming over to make sure it wasn't a free kick. It's going to be a drop ball. Here's another look at it. Well, there's the... It does look to be a clash of heads. It's actually Rebecca Holloway, I think. It was accidental, uh, it appeared, from Holloway's perspective. And Mustafa is still on the ground. It's just a run-through of the Northern Ireland team once again. It's Jackie Burns in goal. That very settled back four of McKenna, Nelson, McFadden, and Vance. So much experience in there. Rebecca Holloway was given a slightly different role on Thursday. Pushed up on the left side. Furness and Marissa Callahan centrally with uh, McGuinness and Lauren Wade. And up top it's Simone Miguel. Game back underway. Thankfully, Mustafa looks to be okay to continue. A real feature of, of the away fixture was the fluency with which Northern Ireland retained possession. Trying to play out from the back. There's another example. McKenna. What a find she's been since forcing her way into the starting lineup. She hasn't given up that full back berth. That's a brilliant ball to look for Wade. Can she keep it in play? Plenty of players flooding forward. McGuinness is one of them. But it's evaded just about everyone. 
Still Kirsty McGinnis shot came in from Callahan. There were a few appeals for a handball and lash clear, but that's Northern Ireland at their best. Yeah, absolutely, and you just see Simone McGill coming into the pocket, Lauren Weir going long and giving that depth and that option that you need. And Well, there's Jackie Burns, her uh, favourite player is Hugo Lloris, known as a sweeper-keeper from Spurs and uh, France, of course. Burns is almost out playing as a centre half. The kick started an attack and Northern Ireland have their first corner kick of the game. Interesting tactic to keep Jackie Burns involved in the game. Yeah, yeah, you know, especially for goalkeepers, we talk about it all the time, concentration and when they're, you know, you're maybe not used as much, but she has two very, very good feet and being able to play up there is not a problem to her. Northern Ireland have been a real threat from set pieces under Kenny Shields. Back to uh, McGuinness, her shot was blocked. It was nice link up play initially between Vance and McGill. Something that uh, Kenny Shields and Dean Shields work on tirelessly on the training pitch and you can see they're very innovative when it comes to set pieces. Burns fizzed it into Holloway. She was unable to control it. One wins the ball back though and McFadden should get there. Lovely bit of footwork from McFadden. Furness. Yet another hat trick for Northern Ireland. 36 goals now she scored. Holloway. McGuinness. Wade's made a great run through the middle all by herself. McGuinness couldn't quite get there. And when Northern Ireland play football like that, they are going to cause North Macedonia huge issues as we've just kind of been showcased there in the, in the last attack. Lauren Wade was in so much space through the middle. You can probably see her in this camera shot. Wasn't picked up. Screaming for the ball. Lovely footwork. Fine. Maxudi is a very young North Macedonian side. Apart from the captain, Maleska, who has plenty of experience in Salahi. Two 30 year olds in the lineup. Apart from that, everybody else is under 23. Maleska. Good pressure being put on by Demi Vance. England, of course, the only team to beat Northern Ireland competitively in 2021. There's a huge fixture between the two sides coming up this summer in the Euros as uh, Furness tries to link up with McGill up top. The key dates, the 7th of July against Norway, then on the 11th, it's Austria, followed by that fixture at St Mary's against England. All of Northern Ireland's matches taking place in Southampton after the draw in Manchester. So much to look forward to. Back with Burns again. Julie Nelson. And now it's McFadden. Nelson and McFadden, the two most experienced players in this lineup. Vance, happy enough to let it run out of play for the corner kick. And you can just feel that Northern Ireland are starting to turn the screw. It maybe hasn't been as fast a start as it was away from home, but there are plenty forward here. Vance looks for a movement. Furness. Ball bounces around. It was Holloway who prodded it forward. I think a, a defender got in the way and somehow it's out for a goal kick. Here's another look at it, Gale. Furness initially. I just think that's going to be key tonight, isn't it, for North Macedonia just to get their bodies in the line. 
Marissa Callahan. In many ways, North Macedonia were architects of their own downfall, gifting possession from goal kicks to Northern Ireland. And they've already fallen into the trap on two or three occasions this evening. Yeah, sometimes, you know, Northern Ireland are so good at the high press. Lovely touch from McGuinness. Here's Vance. Wade's in the middle. Decent delivery. There's the opener. Guess who it's Simone McGill again. Flag up though on the far side. Wasn't sure if it was originally for handball. The ball just does seem to bounce and hit her hand. Or was it for an offside? Well, certainly it's the official on the far side who had her flag raised rather than the the referee here's the ball in it does appear to, to strike an arm it does look as if uh, Simone McGill was just offside her back was actually to the assistant so it uh, it's unlikely she made the decision about the uh, about a, a potential handball but nevertheless it's Still scoreless, but a little warning sign for North Macedonia. Vance playing this similar type of area. Callahan looks for runners. McGill's come deep. Now it's Furnace, brilliant ball to find. McGuinness, will she back herself? Yes, she will, and it's a stunning strike from Kirsty McGuinness, who just loves scoring at Seaview. You have to say Thomas got a ball from Rachel Furness just to split the defence, and when Kirsty gets into those positions, there's nothing else in her mind, and what a strike. Her 12th goal at international level. Simone McGill wanted it inside, but Kirsty McGuinness had other ideas. This will be a brilliant view of it. There's the initial pass from Furnace that caused all the danger. Drilled across the goalkeeper. And then off the upright. Everything there says you hit it with your right foot, but Kirsty's so talented at keeping that on her left foot, and what a finish. Northern Ireland up and running. Holloway to Miguel. Home side has certainly turned to screw. Thanks to that goal from McGuinness. Involved again, but the goalkeeper, Lev Koska, claims it at the near post. We, we talked about earlier the runs that now uh, Rebecca Holloway is making from the midfield. Uh, she was in right inside the sixth there. And I think she fancies herself for another goal tonight. You get the impression that, that the first goal was always going to settle things. And, and even though it was disallowed, once Simone McGill forced that home, Northern Ireland played with such freedom ever since. Yes, because there was five in the box uh, for Simone's uh, goal that was called back. And I think then it just encourages everybody to start making more runs. Nelson. To McFadden. Holloway. There's this position that Gail was referring to moments ago. Almost seems to be playing in a, in a midfield three with Furness and, uh, and Callahan. Gail, we've spoken in the past about facilitating both Holloway and Vance on the same side. They're, they're both out-and-out left-sided players. Both have played at full-back, and, and Demi Vance has had, a, has, has had a brilliant career, but Rebecca Holloway's done nothing wrong since coming in, so Kenny Shee's had to find a way to put the two of them in the starting eleven. Yeah, and he's done it really well, and uh, a few of the old players, the ex-Northern Iron players we're talking about it, is it unbelievable how many fantastic left-footed players we have on the team? You know, with Rachel Furness, Lauren Wade, Demi Vance, it, Kirsty uh, McGuinness. It's just incredible. Uh, you don't always get blessed with it with one or two left-footed players, and now you've, you've nearly got half a team. Here's McFadden. 
four clean sheets in the last five competitive home games. Things are working at that end of the pitch in the final third. They've also been clicking. Although on this occasion, it's away for a throw in. Back with McFadden. Jackie Burns is almost up at the halfway line. Staying involved in play. Here she is once again. Very talented sportsman from sports uh, person from Cookstown. She represented Ireland at underage level in a number of sports. Here she is once more. Ferning. Yeah, Northern Ireland are really going to have to be patient here. You see their movement up front. You know, someone's coming in. The wide players are going forward, but they just need to stick with the game plan because they will unlock the North Macedonia defence. They're working extremely hard. But the, the visitors are, are sitting so deep. There, there doesn't seem to be anything from it. An attacking threat and in their eyes it's all about damage limitation. Holloway looking for Vance. Here's McGuinness once more. McFadden. It's a similar route trying to play through the lines. Nice little drop of the shoulder from Marissa Callahan. And that's what's going to be needed. So it's that we have turned the Vance. Vance. Cal McGill get there. Goalkeeper was quickly off her line and Lekowska denied McGill. Yeah, you just need more players to get on the ball like Furness and Callahan just to show that wee bit of improvisation on the half turn. Callahan. Nice little bit of skill. I think I kicked in the process. Still managed to find Vance charging forward. Scored that stunning free kick, of course, here against Austria. Forced it somewhat, trying to find McGill further forward. Looked as if Demi was almost caught in two minds, whether to have a go herself or, or try and uh, thread it through to McGill. I think uh, you said it right, Thomas. I think she was. Well, it's a miscue clearance. All very risky at the back from North Macedonia. McGill, another corner kick. They're starting to mount up for the home side. And Thomas, you alluded to it earlier. North Macedonia don't want to be making mistakes in their own third. You know, they want to move the ball quickly, and they're already sitting in such a low block. Uh, you know, it invites the pressure on, and Northern Ireland have capitalised. You caught a glimpse here of Kenny Shields. It's, it's his 21st game in charge, and what a turnaround has been. Demi Vance has gone across to take this corner kick. There's a view from Jackie Burns' perspective. Short to McGuinness. Weird might have a pop here. Lauren Weird just over the top from her. Again, it was straight off the training ground. And again, it was one of those left-footed players, although Lauren Weird's been operating in the right side of midfield for the past number of games. Maybe not the cleanest of strikes by her high standards. Holloway. Still Holloway. Good perseverance. Can she pick out a green shirt in the middle? Callahan drilled just wide. She's claiming the corner kick and the assistant on the far side. Initially I thought was going to give it and instead has reversed the decision. Again, Holloway involved. Furness. Should have been a corner kick. Yeah, got to be Nick. Here's Miguel. Again, given away far too easily by North Macedonia. The centre half, uh, Maleska, is, uh, is hitting the goal kicks, and Northern Ireland could find themselves vulnerable at the opposite end, appealing for offside. Decision goes her way, but 
Just a little warning there that they can't be too complacent. Simone Miguel looking for the run of McKenna. Defender was uh, quickly across and Jankowska happy enough to concede the corner kick with McKenna breathing down her neck. Yeah, she just sees in confidence as well, isn't she, Rebecca, from getting on the score sheet in the last match and willing to make those runs forward. I think she perhaps thought her moment was gone when it was an incredible clearance off the line at 1-0, but moments later she got another opportunity and certainly took full advantage of it. She certainly did. What a strike. Simone McGill just lurking in the edge of the uh, six-yard box. Referee having a little word with her in her marker. Fernie at the back post does brilliantly and it's off the line. It was a fantastic effort for Mitchell. Fernie was stretching for it, but on the line, I think it was Bozeska who was well positioned. Goalkeeper beaten. Bozeska denied Fernie goal number 37 McGuinness has come short gets it from Demi Vance McGuinness on a right foot this time and it was unorthodox from the goalkeeper who did just enough I'm not too sure if she saw it very very late and, and then improvised with her feet but here's another look at it I could have gone anywhere certainly could have third corner kick in quick succession again it's towards Fernie McFadden an outstretched leg from her couldn't force a goal but... yeah maybe in her younger years she might have tried the bicycle kick hamstrings might not be up to it now but there's opportunities there for Northern Ireland and I definitely know Kirsty McGuinness sees that. She'll be shooting every opportunity she gets. Back with Burns. Vance had that long layoff, of course, with a knee injury picked up towards the end of the, the group for the Euros. But a massive boost having her back. Weird twisting and turning. Now it's Simone Miguel. Now to play for a goal kick this time. Simone Miguel up to 20 international goals after four on Thursday. Of course, holds a world, world record for the quickest ever goal scored. That was back in 2016 when she scored after 11 seconds against uh, Georgia wonder what he'll be saying Kenny Shields the side have certainly created plenty of opportunities in the opening 22 minutes but have only managed to convert one of them McKenna managed to win the free kick I think was perhaps guilty of overplaying it a little bit in the far side but the free kick has gone to Northern Ireland Austria and England to come in uh, April of course to conclude the group that Austria fixture could prove to be a huge huge game away from home here's McKenna finds way Holloway got her toe to it. And leaves it for McGuinness who's whipped right across the face of goal. Back with McKenna. And Callahan uh, swung a right foot at it. Couldn't do too much. And I think Simone McHill's claiming the corner kick, which has been awarded as a goalkeeper, took it over the line. Yeah, I think Marissa Callahan had walked away. She was frustrated with herself just with the initial ball in but again look at the quality from Kirsty McGuinness this ball fizzed across the goal and fortunately just no one there lurking Northern Ireland very much knocking at the door
McGuinness. Captain got it away, not once but twice, and the decision then goes the way of North Macedonia. For the challenge of Holloway on the uh, left back, I think it was Buzeska who was brought down. We can hear Kenny Shields below us screaming at his players. Fernick. Callahan. Anywhere will do for the visitors. Maxui closed down quickly by McGuinness and then drifted across to Julie Nelson. Before tonight, Northern Ireland have won nine of their last 13 games. To put that in context, in the previous 39 games, they'd only managed to win nine as well. So there has been a transformation, a huge turnaround. So much to look forward to this summer with the Euros, but this squad and management team haven't given up hope of making it to the World Cup in 2023 tournament that's been held in New Zealand and uh, Australia you have, you have to say Thomas you know for North Macedonia Mascuda has been their standout player every time she's getting on the ball she's trying to beat three people off the dribble get her team up the pitch but unfortunately they just keep giving up the ball and Northern Ireland are relentless again in another attack the drum beat has started and the supporters have just tried to Add a little bit of atmosphere to push the home side further forward. Julie Nelson. 122 international caps now for her. A rock at the back. Made her debut. 17 years ago now. Here is Max Sui. As you mentioned, Gail, very much the, the live wire, the player trying to make things happen, but unfortunately, the individual was not going to beat the collective in that situation. And it must be extremely frustrating for that there's so few options up ahead. Yeah, I think she was even faster than her teammate there off the dribble, and she had no options really going forward which North Macedonia need to do um, just a little bit better to relieve some pressure Holloway the Birmingham City player tries to find McGuinness there's look at the stands pack crowd and save you great to see of course the playoff was played behind closed doors but there's a there's a fantastic atmosphere, not just inside the ground, but even pre-match outside it. Great to see so many young boys and girls here. Holloway. To Callahan. Now it's weird. It's difficult for Northern Ireland as well, because North Macedonia are sitting so, so deep, to try and find those little pockets of space. Yeah, it is. You know, they're in a back five, but they're have the 16 just sitting right in front you know a little triangle so just threading those balls through you know there isn't much space and you know they're doing a really good job if Kirsty comes inside we're getting an overlap and you're seeing uh, Rebecca McKenna you know get into the final third and Rebecca Holloway but you just have to stay more patient patient on the ball and, and, and it will come Can you understand the, the tentative approach from North Macedonia's standpoint when you take into account that they shipped 11 last week? Absolutely they're saying sit in a low block frustrate us make it difficult and again you can see it as soon as they win the ball they're happy to give us it back but they just don't want to concede they are without a handful of players that played previously in the group but managed a 4-1 victory over over Latvia but they've uh, conceded 29 goals so far the majority of those of course to Northern Ireland yeah, and what you see is, you know, we've been in those situations where maybe we haven't had a whole lot of depth in the squad, and if you lose one or two of your starters, it has a real knock-on effect. And 
they seem to be in that kind of situation. Past the halfway point of the group after this evening. As the challenge comes in, and McGinnis is a fair one according to the Israeli official. Again, it's Maxudi putting herself about. Gave you very early identified her as, as a main threat, but is also trying to, to will, her, will her players forward and lead by example with challenges like that. Here's Marissa Callahan. She gives it away cheaply. Demi Vance coming up to the half-hour mark. All the danger coming down this left-hand side. Callahan, you can you see her just dropping a little bit deeper now to get on the ball. Holloway might be tempted to have a goal. Good strike, brilliant goal. Northern Ireland have had to be patient, waiting for a second. And when it arrived, it was a pretty special one from Rebecca Holloway. Scored away from home, has found the net at Seaview. It's been a good week for the Birmingham City defender. Sometimes that happens, Thomas, when you open your account, you get another one straight after, and she definitely fancied herself. She gets it out of her feet and strikes it so cleanly. Is it also maybe a lesson that you have to be brave and you have to have a go in, in situations like this? That Northern Ireland have had so much possession, have, have had to be very patient and have, and have had to hold on to the ball and break down a very, very difficult defence that sometimes having a pop is the best way. Yeah, and, and it was a calculated one. It wasn't like a forced, you know, she's on top of the box, she gets the ball out of her feet, she sees the opening and she places it in the top corner. And again, it's an extra, an excellent strike. And again, I think I forgot the mention her, but she's left-footed too. Here's Demi Vance, who will argue that her free kick was a better strike against Austria. We'll let those two girls have that debate in the dressing room, but so far it's 2-0 to Northern Ireland in complete control of this game. And you sense that there are going to be plenty more goals where that came from. Vance. Across to McFadden. Vance again. Inside the, the furnace. Now it's McGuinness. Oh, it's a, an awkward one. Right in the face of the the, the right back. She's going to require attention. Jankowska. You can see that it was um, Kirsty McGuinness's intention to play the ball in the first time. And the North Macedonian defender felt the full force. Assessment so far, what would you want to see from, in the remaining hour from Northern Ireland? I think if we just turn the screw a little bit, up the tempo, move the ball a little bit faster. I think around the back, you know, they're sitting in such a low block, you know, it's given us time. But if we can shift it quicker, I think there'll be more gaps open up. I still think Simone needs to come into the pocket and have her wide players run on, as well as more runs from the midfield. I haven't seen enough from Marissa Callahan getting into the final third. And again, uh, Rachel Furness started the game so brightly first 10 minutes, but has kind of faded in the last 10. Demi Vance's corner kick. Three Northern Ireland players attacked the ball. It was McFadden who got her head on. And I think perhaps Holloway or, or even Furness were better positioned in behind. So the results so far in the group. Northern Ireland kicked off, of course, at Inver Park with a 4-0 victory against Luxembourg. Then it was that historic encounter at Windsor Park. Defeated Latvia 4-0. Then at Wembley. Lost by four to England, having held him out for so much of the game. Had a huge chance, of course, 
as well. Nil nil. It was an inspired performance from Jackie Burns at Wembley. But then bounced back, of course, with a 2 2 draw here against Austria. Furness got the call from Lauren Wade. Decent ball in. Furness attacks it. Simone McGill does that cross the line. Somehow it doesn't. Well, the official on the far side was looking right across the goal line there and somehow that stayed out. You just missed the wee Kirsty McGuinness nutmeg. She tried to do her on the first one, but she got her in the second attempt. And as much as her confidence has just grown and grown as this game goes on. Jackie Burns now over the halfway line. Finds McKenna. And this is the type of situation you were talking about, trying to move it quicker from positions like this? Yes, I think, you know, getting our width earlier here. And you'll see now Marissa Callahan making good runs forward. Two in support. Back with the goalkeeper again. Julie Nelson tries to work it on the right side. Simone McGill gets there. Marissa Callahan. Simone McGill back to Furness. Is this the moment she scores her 37th international goal? Nobody has found the net more regularly at international level for Northern Ireland. Lovely build-up play. Crisp passing. And that's the player you would want on the end of it. Gail, it's exactly what you asked for. Yeah. And I think it's a lovely layback here from Marissa. Just has the awareness that Simone there just touches it back and Rachel Furness does what she does best. Just putting it in the back of the net and no one deserving more. Thomas, to have that accolade as, as Rachel Furness's top goal score for Northern Ireland. Celebrating in front of the fans. She'll be hoping there are plenty more moments like that to come in a green shirt. Three nil, and Northern Ireland have been good value for that. Perhaps could have had two or three more. It's fascinating watching Jackie Burns just try and make runs. She was almost in the in the left back position there. You're going to hit me, Thomas, but you know she's left footed. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely little touch from McKenna. Corner kick. She's just a tireless warrior, isn't she, Rebecca McKenna? Always willing to do the extra for the team, keeping that in there just to get the corner. Yeah, very tough defensively. Has relished one-on-one -on -one battles against uh, some of Europe's best players, but getting forward, it's, it's a real asset that the former Linfield defender has. McFadden made their little run in the middle. Furness attacks the ball, beats everyone and runs out of play for a goal kick. Andorra are the, are the only country ranked below North Macedonia in the world rankings. Northern Ireland are, are 48th. You'd expect with a coefficient that will improve given the performances over, over the last year or so. They haven't translated so far to the world rankings, but you would expect it when their next release, Northern Ireland will climb up. When you look at the Euros, of course, this summer, there's 16 teams. As McGuinness tries to chip the goalkeeper, second for Kirsty McGuinness, and a fourth for Northern Ireland. The goalkeeper was completely out of position. That was spotted by Kirsty McGuinness. And you don't want to give her opportunities like that. No, not at all. And she looked at Lauren Wade's run and then she saw the keeper backtracking and she did it on purpose. She dinked her. And what a finish. Here's another look at it. Simone McGill once again involved in the build-up. Inch perfect from McGuinness. It's a brilliant camera angle that showcase just how good a finish it was 
from Northern Ireland's number 11. He's on the ball yet again. Tries to pick out the pass through the middle for Callaghan. But just the point I was trying to make earlier on is there are 16 teams in the Euro, in the Euros. 15 of the top sides in Europe are there, and Northern Ireland 48th are there. Once again, puts in context just how remarkable an achievement it has been from this squad. It is, you know, that you know, in the newspapers a couple of weeks ago they were talking about, you know, Kenny being snubbed from the FIFA Coach of the Year. And, you know, when you, you hear those kind of stats, you know, when you talk about them winning nine out of their last 13 and they had only won nine of their last 35 before, you know, it really is a remarkable achievement. And, you know, full credit to him, his staff, and this group of girls particularly the performances against the likes of, of England and Austria, that England performance probably wasn't reflective of the game. Three of the goals came very late on, and there's a steely resolve about this Northern Ireland squad, and a real clinical element too, as Simone McGill finds Holloway on the attack once more. Holloway trying to link up with uh, McKenna, who, fl who flung herself at the back post trying to get on the end of the cross. Everybody wants to get in on the act. That's when you know the confidence is high. The fullbacks make it an overlapping run. They get into the final third, and unfortunately, Rebecca just couldn't pick out Rebecca McKenna on the other side. 4 0 after 40 minutes. I, I, I'm fairly confident in saying that, that Northern Ireland are, are going to go up to second in the group. They're currently level with Austria on 10 points. They've now also got a a better goal difference than Austria. That could prove to be crucial, potentially in, in the battle for, for second spot, although everything will, of course, come down to the, the, the game between Northern Ireland and Austria in April. It looks to be a straight shootout between the pair for a place in the playoffs. It's a very complicated system after that, but Northern Ireland would love to be involved in that complicated system. They surely will. Because as they've proved before against Ukraine, anything can happen. Marissa Callahan says dreams do come true. Here's Vance. Every single time Northern Ireland get the ball down the left-hand side, you sense it could cause trouble as McGuinness disguised the pass perfectly. Wade, one-on-one. -on -one. Denied by the goalkeeper. I think Lauren Wade just glanced across to see if the flag was up. And, and in glancing across it, enable the goalkeeper to come off her line quickly yeah she maybe just need to go for the wee chip instead of the side for the pass but credit to the goalkeeper came out early narrowed down the angle outstretched leg Furness claiming a, a corner kick Saying that there, there was a touch off number 16, Petrovska. Didn't see it myself, but Rachel Fernie was adamant. And you can see from situations like this now, Northern Ireland know that North Macedonia are vulnerable and they're just pushing up. Everybody is inside the Macedonian half. Demi Vance, good pressure in the ball. Mustafa had nowhere to go. Yeah, and it's reasons like that. I think that was three consecutive passes North Macedonia made there, but they're not getting very, very few more than that. Northern Ireland are just winning the ball back consistently, just so fast and putting them all under pressure. And those three passes were under such pressure. Couldn't force the ball forward. Northern Ireland hassling and harrying their opponents. As a pass from uh, Vance is a little bit overhead. Two minutes to go to half time. Kenny Seals never, never looks that happy, no matter what the result is, but he will be uh, trying to get the girls in at half time and let me make a few tweaks. Although it's four 0 you can't be, can't be, can't be too unhappy with the, with the first half performance. No, I think he just maybe would like to see us 
create more opportunities from our set plays on target. The deliveries have been very, very good. Maybe just creating that space in the box for each other, just to free up the likes of Furness and Mac. Shkemskovic receiving a little bit of attention. Different role tonight for uh, Simone McGill. Played very much in the shoulder on Thursday and and having scored those four goals, Northwest only maybe decided to, to retreat a little bit, haven't given her those type of opportunities. Big yeah. fan favourite, uh, Simone McGill. She certainly is. You, she, she just knows where the net is. She's clinical. But they're playing one right in front of her and one behind her, you know, and, and the little diamond of, a, of, the, of the three of the back five. And you know, everywhere she goes, someone's following her. But it's given space for more midfielders to make the third man run. You know, we've seen that with Furness for her goal and just Northern Ireland just need to do more of that one of the best aspects of the, of the group games and, and bringing the Northern Ireland women's team to the different stadiums has been the reaction afterwards the, the selfies the photographs the signatures so many boys and girls getting an opportunity to get to get up close and, and maybe meet some of these players something you don't necessarily get in the men's game it's, it's been a fan experience that's been really well worked on occasions like this yes and you'll see some posters uh, you know Marissa can I have your jersey they were giving away their tops their boots Riesel Furness gave away one girl's birthday was to give her boots away and so it is it, it's just fantastic because they're role models and they're inspiring the next generation of young female footballers in our country which is amazing here's Marissa Callahan looking for Wade who's certainly got the pace to burn but it's going to have to make do with a throw and on this occasion we are in first half injury time just waiting to see the board below us to find out how much extra time is going to be played we've had three or four stoppages because of injuries here's Vance look how deep uh, Maxudi is now playing gives it away though Miguel can she get in on the act that's a brilliant pass to find Holloway in the overlap, pull back, there's Wade, it's five. Flags up again, though. No. And it was probably the pick of the bunch. The movement was excellent, and then just unfortunately, she must have just straight offside, hoping to see it in the replay here. The crowd's not happy. Well, my first reaction is, that's very, very tight. Here, let's look at it again. There's Holloway. Oh, not less the no, it's definitely offside. Couldn't see anything on that. I, I certainly can't see it again. It'll be interesting to have another look at it, but it, it didn't it look like offside from our camera angle. So Lauren Wade will feel that she should have banged the fifth in first half injury time. Not less it's just going out of bounds there, Thomas, and they're giving a goal kick. Again, I, I didn't notice that from the from the initial replay, but. There won't be a fifth before half time. Northern Ireland in complete control. Rebecca Holloway amongst the goals, and I think she's just asking the official what was it for. And the referee has said, suggested that it did cross the line. So half time, Northern Ireland four, North Macedonia nil. Rachel Furness on the score sheet as per usual as was Holloway from distance so far so good for Kenny Shield's side in group D let's look back at the highlights from the first half this is the opener Simone McGill involved Furness as well Kirsty McGuinness took ownership and broke the deadlock when she got the nutmeg in and the you know, early in the second half, I knew she meant business, and, and she just tuck, tucks that one in away so nicely in the far corner. That set the ball rolling. It was really the pass from Rachel Furness to pick out the run of McGuinness that caused all the problems, and you simply can't give her opportunities like that. Deadly on her uh, left foot, Kirsty McGuinness.
Had to wait a little while for the second, though. In the end, it was Ronda, remember, for Rebecca Holloway. Smashed it home from distance. Again, McGill involved in the build-up. Goalkeeper got a hand on it, but couldn't keep it out. That made it two. And Northern Ireland afterwards played with a lot more freedom. None more so than Jackie Burns, who was involved in this goal. The outstretched leg of McGill found Callahan. Involved again before Rachel Furness scored international goal number 37. Nobody has found the net more in a green shirt. A landmark strike from the Liverpool midfielder. Who celebrated with as much gusto as she did when she opened her international account all those years ago. Still time for a fourth before the interval. Furnace's header. It arrived with McGuinness. There was no real threat, but she managed to spot the goalkeeper off her line. And that wand of a left foot did the rest. A pinpoint finish from Kirsty McGuinness. Her second of the evening. Northern Ireland's fourth. The home side also had two goals disallowed. As Northern Ireland's winger celebrates another goal at international level. There's been plenty to celebrate for this squad in 2021. There's been plenty to celebrate this evening at Seaview. And we're hoping for more goals in the second half. After 45 minutes, it's Northern Ireland 4, Macedonia 0. We'll be back with the second half very soon.
view Northern Ireland in complete control here against North Macedonia in this Women's World Cup qualifying game. Two changes at half time for the home side. It looks like Jolie Andrews and Kira Watling are coming on. I think it's going to be Rebecca McKenna and Sarah McFadden making way. So Kenny Shields slightly mixing things up after the break. The subs are about to be announced right now, and I confirm that. Yes, it is um, Watling and Andrews for McKenna and McFadden. Gail Redmond alongside me on uh, co commentary What do you make of those switches? I actually thought the game was crying out for Julie Andrews, you know, someone that can really pick a pass, break down the defence, and so I'm not surprised at that one. I think that's a really positive move by Kenny. Her fourth international cap for the uh, Glentoran player. Made her debut against the Faroes. And someone you certainly identified off camera that could make a difference in and around midfield. Just waiting for the second half to get underway and there's going to be a substitution as well for North Macedonia. Markovska introduced, played in the match on Thursday and she comes in for Shemskovic North Ireland looking for a fast start to the second half after those four goals in the first two of them for the player on the ball Kirsty McGuinness, she's involved could fall for a win, what a start that would have been nine seconds I think that would have been had that ended up in the back of the net but it shows that Northern Ireland are determined to add to that tally again McGuinness involved lovely little bit of skill from her first time effort from Wade couldn't keep it down we had to see Marissa Callahan getting in the box it was a bit critical in the first half thought she didn't get far enough forward and she's maybe uh, Kenny's maybe spoke to her at half time and told her to play higher up it's very hard to be critical when you're four in a lot, but what else would have been said in the dressing room at halftime? Yeah, I think how we started, he, he wants to improve the tempo, move the ball quickly, um, get his wide players forward, and, and the quality that we have in the wide areas is phenomenal, and, and you've seen that, and we just need to see more of it. Northern Ireland had that brilliant start to the second half against Austria, those two quick-fire goals, one from Wade and the, the second from that stunning uh, Demi, Demi Vance free kick. It, it's a packed house, but need to get the fans involved too there, there's been four goals this year two disallowed and a couple of chances but there isn't quite the party atmosphere there has been in previous games yes and no i think that's correct and again that's something that hopefully we can address a few more songs about the girls i think would help that rachel furness this time going with the right foot her efforts blocked and is picked up by andrews now you know you know very well yeah she's just grown from strength to strength our boots aren't as bright as Kirsty McGuinness's, but I think we can all notice them. Lovely turn from McGill. Opens up. McGuinness, is this the hat trick? Not on this occasion. And I think Kirsty McGuinness has said it should have been a penalty for the for the shirt tug before that. The defender was all over her. And I think Thomas, there's one player that's been involved in every single one of Northern Ireland's build up goals, and that's Simone McGill again. Great turn, and Kirsty is so unlucky there. She shows good resilience to hold off the player, but just couldn't find the back of the net. Simone McGill, the real focal point of this attack as it comes back for Holloway. McGill in the six yard box can't get her toe onto it. Nice touch from Watley. We'll play alongside uh, Julie Nelson in the second half. Weird. Still weird. I think a handball's been given. I have to say that, that looked to be very, very harsh. Uh, it was a ricochet after the challenge, and uh, it's going to result in a North Macedonia free kick. This is another look at it. Well, on second glance, Fish has probably got that one right. Yeah, I think her arm is out on that position. And you can see North Macedonia is intense, so and everything down. Not rushing to take anything quickly. 
It's going to be a long second half if they're trying to employ that tactic throughout it. Just a few keep you up, sir. Furness. Given straight to Marissa Callahan. Here's McGuinness, five in the middle. Played in towards Simone McGill, who just couldn't get there. Every single time Kirsty McGuinness gets him on the ball, she causes trouble. And, well, isn't it great to have Simone McGill back? Playing as that lone striker. It's been such a threat. Hasn't managed to find the net so far, but I feel it's only a matter of time. Here's Vance. The touch didn't quite work out on this occasion from McGinnis. Good pressure back to try and close down Jankowska. As Watling cuts out the through ball. Mustafa might be an effort from distance and it's a it's a decent effort it was a substitute Markoska first time shot you know, Thomas I watched her warm up and she's very technical you know she, she trained uh, for, the, for the whole 15 minutes with with the trainer and loads of touches very technical player and I thought to myself you know if she gets time and space like she did she could hurt you it was a little bit of a surprise that she wasn't included in the starting lineup. There's a little bit of a reshuffle at the back uh, for the North Macedonians, as you would understand. Brilliant run for Mikkel. Finds Andrews. Here's Wade. Looking to get in that left foot. So many defenders back, though. Nelson. Unable to find Holloway. That's exactly the situation you were referring to in the, in, the, in the first half, Gail. Yeah, more, more runs from the midfield, more third man runs, but we don't need to force it. I think we just need to bring it out and get some width again. Supporters well wrapped up. Well, it's a mild enough night here in CFU. Furness. McGuinness. Callahan's pull back. Miscued effort from. Uh, Marissa Callahan. Usually so dangerous in that situation. How many times has that pair linked up this season with you playing football together for uh, Cliftonville in the domestic league? Here is Vance. Furness can't get there. So to play for another throw in. Seven minutes into this second half. Burns. He's already had three clean sheets in the group. That's something that the North Ireland defenders will be eager to improve upon this this evening. Northern holding on to the ball. Simone Miguel forced to come deep again before rejoining the attack. It's a poor pass from Demi Vance, very unlike her. And Northern have to find a way to try and break through the lines and stretch this uh, North Macedonian defence yeah I think the early ball's on over the top first if not they're going to have to be patient Marissa Callahan to Furness McGinnis this is better 
Can't find Simone Miguel though. A little bit of movement again on the bench. I wonder if they're considering a switch as the goalkeeper receives attention. It was very brave to get there ahead of Simone Miguel. And that link up on the left hand side is been a constant thorn in the visitors defense here we go just a little bit too close to the goalkeeper that time though just doesn't seem to get her feet wrapped around it this is the only game in uh, group D this evening So Northern Ireland will go up to second in the table. Austria were defeated 1-0 by England at the weekend. And in terms of the goal difference, it's Northern Ireland with a, with a slightly better one than, than Austria at the moment. Although, as I mentioned earlier, that fixture away on the 8th of April is going to be key for Kenny Shields' side. Still concern over the goalkeeper, Lekowska. Simone Miguel just left a foot in as she was uh, trying to get in the end of Kirsty McGuinness's cross, and looks like she's going to be okay to continue. So 10 minutes into the second half, and no further goals for the for the home side Kirsty McGuinness put Northern Ireland underway after 11 minutes then there were three goals in quick succession Holloway and Furness found the net before McGuinness grabbed her second Furness to McGill still McGill Marissa Callahan, goalkeeper was brave once more it's just the final pass at time Gail it is, it is. It just seems to let them down. You know, you have fantastic crossing from Kirsty McGuinness and then when we needed it, you know, the near post one, it was just too close to the goalkeeper in here. Just a little bit overrun. Marissa can't get on the end of it. And... Simone McGill has missed a lot of games for, for various reasons over the last uh, over the last 12 months or so, but, but how important is it for Northern Ireland to have her leading the line? Oh, she's so much quality. And, you know, speaking to Kerry Beattie, and she was telling me how much she learns off her every time she's in camp. And, you know, so she's a great leader as well. Always willing to pass her knowledge on and, and we we'll see her, her true quality. Made her debut at international level as a 15-year-old 12 years ago. Involved in the full-time game with Everton. And even for, for the likes of, uh, of Jackie Burns growing up in the, in the same area goalkeeper spoken about how much of a hero Simone McGill was and how she wanted to emulate her the two are now playing in the same international team on their way to a major tournament this summer yeah the Middlestar area is very very proud of those two players Middlestar ladies included in that where they both played and having that conveyor belt of talent and and someone that you're not necessarily looking up to internationally but locally makes a big big difference you can see the rewards for for various uh, coaching schemes in the likes of belfast right now and having the likes of marissa callahan taking a lot of those sessions players see a pathway it's a pathway that's been started by the likes of uh, julie nelson or marissa callahan and when you look at the age profile of this north Ireland squad there's plenty of young players coming through Julie Andrews prods it forward now it's back with the visitors and Salahi number of players of course to come back in to contention for April thanks to Ashley Hutton as had such a difficult injury to, to deal with in, in recent months. Kenny Shields will be hoping to have her presence back. Such a reassuring force alongside uh, Nelson and McFadden at the back. 
Negan Bell, another one. Abby McGee. Everyone will want to be on the plane to Southampton this summer. Marissa Callahan, can she keep it in play? McGill's looping headers off the woodwork, completely misjudged by the goalkeeper. Furnace's follow up is blocked. And another chance goes a begging. I don't think everyone was expecting that to hit the bar and just come straight out. McGinnis has tormented her marker. Marissa Callahan just finds Simone McGill. Didn't look like she was going to be able to do anything with it. But her effort glances off the woodwork. Holloway could fall for McInnes. On a hat trick, of course. Here's Andrews. Wants a little bit of movement from Wade. Just opens up for Wade. Nice McGuinness. It's worked from right to left. Yeah, I think we talked about it earlier in the first half, you know, what they need to do. And sometimes it is that, you know, off the dribble, that improvisation, you know, that creativity. It just moves the Macedonian bank of five where gaps are just created. It's a wall of yellow that Northern Ireland have to contend with. Callahan to Furness. That's a little bit better to find McGuinness in space. And the outstretched leg of Simone McGill couldn't force that goal word, so home side are going to have to make do with a corner kick. Hopefully we just see a bit of a better delivery from Demi Fans in this one here. Maybe in towards the six-yard box, a little bit deeper. Well, Rachel Furness isn't the tallest player, but it's very impressive in the air. And it's taken short. Nelson can't get there. Here is Furness. Can she pick her spot? Just can't keep it down. It's been a frustrating opening quarter of an hour from Northern Ireland's point of view. They've been completely dominant. Created a number of opportunities, but haven't been able to add to their four goals. Just a wee bit of the atmosphere we were looking for, Thomas, from the crowd. Spurring the girls on. And you feel that another goal would do that, you know. The crowd have been uh, very vocal and... There's just an odd atmosphere in and around Seaview right now in, in terms of how the game's going. You can understand that because it's all one-way traffic. North Macedonia have contributed very little in an attacking sense. It's a better run from McGill. Simone McGill, there's the hat trick. McGill, the provider, and Kirsty McGuinness with the simplest of finishes. Yes, you're certainly not used to scoring top it. Created by McGill, and Kirsty McGuinness will leave with a match ball. Two. Fine strikes in the first half. This one was from a lot closer. Picked out brilliantly by McGill. And it's another night to remember for Kirsty McGuinness. And it all came from the type of of football you've you've been craving just a little bit quicker a little bit more incisive and and the run from mcgill was perfectly timed that created the opportunity for mcginnis i know in another day you might think oh simone hasn't scored but she's been all involved in every single one of northern ireland's goals and, and link up play has just been immense tonight and given the role that she plays a lot as a, as a lone striker so much of it is, is about work rate and holding up the ball, not necessarily the goals as she skips past the midfielder and finds weight. 
Another brilliant ball in and another goal. It's Holloway again. Two quick fire finishes and suddenly it's six. McGill with her fancy footwork found Wade. It was another wicked ball in and first time with her right foot this time. Rebecca Holloway applies the finish. That's more like it from the home side who have found a rhythm. Louise McDaniel replaces Marissa Callahan. McDaniel, of course, scored that historic goal at Windsor Park two months ago. The first Northern Ireland woman to find a net at the National Stadium. She want to find it in North Belfast now. And you can see even the way that Northern Ireland are flooding forward. They sense that the floodgates could well open. But they have to be worried at the back. It's an effort from a long, long way out. A hopeful one from Mustafi. Yeah, no, no, just need to be careful there. Then we just caught a little bit too tight. Mustafi was able to turn her. We don't want to give Macedonia any presents tonight. We just want to make sure that we stay solid at the back and we keep doing what we're doing and moving the ball early. Well, you'll be sure that the likes of of Demi Vance, Jackie Burns and, and also Julie Nelson will be determined to get another clean sheet. Something that's been a, a real feature. As I mentioned earlier, four in their last five competitive home games as Vance picks out Wade. Miguel, is this the goal that she deserves? So, so close. And it might have been the prettiest of the night. What a turn inside. Great ball from Lorne Wade. See Demi Vance plays it out. What a turn. Oh, very, very unlucky. That deserved a goal. She deserves a goal given her performance. interesting conversation going on between Kenny Shields and, and Rachel Furness. A couple of players warming up and well, it's, it's good to see that the players are also uh, involved in the dialogue. They, they're on the pitch know what needs maybe to be tinkered with and Simone McGill does get the corner kick that she appeals for. Doesn't Kenny's player management is second to none. You know, the players rave about it. I gets the balance of rest and training. Plans, of course, for these players to go full time from January. At the moment, they're juggling football and their day jobs. Here's Furness. Holloway, lovely little drop of the shoulder. North Macedonia are living very, very dangerously at the back. There's a, a player down in the penalty area. I think it was Petrovska from the from the initial clearance. But Northern Ireland play on. Here's Vance. I think the ball's going to go out of play now. Good sportsmanship. Yeah, right Petrovska can receive a little bit of attention. Her teammates didn't seem overly concerned as they went forward, though. No, because she, I think the fullback just went and got back into position. But it was the right thing to do. She's obviously clearly in pain. I think it, there are going to be changes coming up from a Northern Ireland point of view. Quite a bit of movement on the bench, and it's going to be an opportunity for uh, for Kenny Shields and, and Dean Shields that. Mix things up. It looks like it's going to be uh, Kerry Beatty who will be eager to open her international account. Young striker. So highly thought of.
Mikel. Looking for Jolie Andrews. Simone Miguel playing with a big smile on her face. Hasn't found uh, the net, but has uh, laid on plenty of opportunities. I think she's probably been involved in every single goal. Yeah, she's been immense. And, you know, as a number nine for Northern Ireland, you have to be able to hold the ball up. You know, in the past, she talked about, you know, being a tireless runner, but she's really brought that into her play of being the link person. It's going to be Kirsty McGuinness. Has got her hat trick. And it's going to be given a little bit of a rest. Her goals have lit up Seaview this evening. Two in the first half. And then a tap in for her third after the break. So it looks like Kerry Beatty will go up top alongside uh, Simone McGill. Furness. Nice Andrews. Rebecca Holloway, of course, is on a hat trick as well. Waltman. Looks for McGill. That's certainly the route which is uh, reaping rewards at the moment. As one back by Watling. A little bit of indecision between McDaniel and, uh, and McGill as to who was going to go for the ball. And just just out of play. It just goes to show the flexibility in Kenny's team and the depth that he has, you know, with Demi and Julie and. Rebecca Holloway just slotting in there, the back three with Watling just in front. And, you know, he's getting to be able to see, you know, different combinations now of players playing certain roles. Debbie Vance just had a little glance behind her and then well, it was a difficult one back towards Burns who controls it and then finds Holloway. Very composed goalkeeping from Jackie Burns who has had to stay alert. Don't think she's had a save to make in, in either of the games so far. I think she deserves a night off given how much she was involved in the, in the matches last month against both England and Austria. Just less than 20 minutes to go. Macedonia corner of the game. There's been so little in it from an attacking perspective. North Macedonia have scored six goals so far in the group. Four of them were against Latvia and then they were edged out 3-2 by Luxembourg. It's a pull back towards the, the substitute and then Eventually, the shot came in. It was from uh, the right back. It was Jankowska. And it's an opportunity for Northern Ireland to counter attack. We back to Beatty. Took a deflection and it was spilled initially by the goalkeeper and gathered the second attempt. And funny enough, the, the ball like the Lauren Wade there, their coaching bench was, was nearly going berserk because they knew the counter would be on from the left side because Wade said so wide. He got her the ball and shows great pace again. And just unfortunately, the ball in hits a deflection and Beattie couldn't get on the end of it. Vance to McGill. Has Beattie alongside her. Might not need Beattie. There is the goal that her performance has deserved. Simone McGill has been unplayable this evening. It's a seventh for Northern Ireland. And I don't think anyone could begrudge Simone McGill that goal. 
all about the first touch that took her away from the defender initially after that she was calmness personified I was just thinking there Thomas we do all those little drills where you peel off the cone or peel off the mannequin she does it through her she'll find herself in space and she just has the great vision just to put it in the bottom corner North Macedonia will be looking to see the back of Northern Ireland that's 18 goals conceded and we've still got a quarter of an hour remaining an effort from distance from Maxudi you look at the age profile of North Macedonia side and the majority of players are, are under the age of 23 so they're very much a team that are trying to to build a profile within the game they are and as soon as they get a little few more players then in the, the likes of Levante you know as well as in Finland and um, you know they'll, they'll start being able to move up the rankings and without a number of, of players particularly in an attacking sense for these two games and when you look at the group there level alongside Luxembourg battling for for fourth spot in, in group D that would provide valuable uh, coefficient points flags up for offside great line again from Northern Ireland Julian Demi just reaching up there at the right time Terry Beatty here's Nelson Taking over the captain's armband after uh, Mercy Callahan went off. Waltman. It's been a key trade of Northern Ireland so far this evening. Switching the ball from side to side. All the defenders very comfortable in possession as is the goalkeeper Burns. Do you like the balance of the side with uh, both Vance and, Vance and Holloway? I really do, and I, I like the balance now. You've got uh, Wade on the left and McDaniels on the right. It's a brilliant pass to find McGill. Forces it across goal and away by the defender. McGill clattered into the advertising hoarding. Very brave and persistent trying to get on the end of the Julian Nelson pass. Really good ball. I think it caught everyone by surprise initially. McGill. She's got her head up and unable to find Wade in the middle. Hussein's about to come on for North Macedonia. But Northern Ireland are back on the counter on an attack. Here's the switch. Off comes number 11, Sahahi. It's been a pretty perfect 2021 from a Northern Ireland perspective. These two results, just an exclamation point mark at the, at the end of what's been a fantastic year. The final fixture in 2021 and father and son have masterminded Northern Ireland's progression to their first ever major tournament and kept them very very much in contention for a spot at the World Cup England looked to be running away with the group but second spot is going to be a straight shootout between Northern Ireland and Austria certainly has been a marvellous year and I think it's one of those things Thomas that will not really know the magnitude until years to come when we reflect back and just to really see how, how wonderful these results have been and to get to a major tournament for the very first time in Northern Ireland's history has just been phenomenal as it stands it's like 28 goals in six games say it again sounds good well, there's still 12 minutes to go, so you never know that might well change. Four clean sheets. As part of that as well, at the moment. 
five, five yeah, four clean sheets as part of it at the moment. England to come, of course, at home in April. Just after that game against the Austrians. Furness was winding up and well, that was a vital interception from the centre half. I think it was Mikshevska. Everybody wants to get in the act. There's so many North Ireland players hovering around the penalty area. McDaniels has come short. Could fall for Fernie. Kept it on target, but the defender was well positioned on the line. Hit it so cleanly, Rachel Furness. Beating. McGill wants it in the six yard box. It's beaten up to everyone. Furness in the follow up. Her efforts blocked. Now it's McDaniel. Can she get past two defenders? Just ran out of room. It's been relentless right from the word go, Gail. It really has in great composure again, you know, starting from Julie Andrews, you know, like the Holloway and then the Beatty. Just to put that ball in that danger area, ask questions. I think. If Rachel actually probably takes a touch around her, she maybe gets a better opportunity to score. In the last 10. Can Northern Ireland find more goals to leave this crowd very, very happy as they uh, drift away from Seaview. As it stands, I'm sure they'll be pretty pleased with eight with seven it sounds better though thomas hopefully maybe for another one got a little bit ahead of himself there here is uh nelson our first time pass is uh miscued and out for a throw-in for north macedonia So it will, of course, further extend that competitive record at home from August 2019. The first game that Kenny Shields took charge against uh, Norway, a side that they will meet again in the summer with all of their superstars. That will kick off the Euros from Northern Ireland's point of view as Caitlin McGuinness replaces Rebecca Holloway. Two goals for Holloway. And Caitlin McGuinness, after her sister bagged three, will want to leave Seaview with a goal as well. Instantly involved as uh, McGill tried to skip past the defender. Andrews to Furness. Weird. I think it's Lauren Weird now just tucking in on that left side and getting an opportunity to play in a on the left side in the absence of Kirsty McGuinness. It's been all in one way traffic this evening. Jackie Burns hasn't had a save to make, and it's been a very professional performance. Weird looks for movement. 
Andrews. Two Glentoran players linking up, and he was appealing for a foul as he uh, forced her way forward, but the referee was well positioned and was having none of it. Yeah, I have to admit the referees let everything go today. Been very consistent in that. You know, Kirsty again is complaining maybe in the first half as well, but she's she stuck to her guns and she hasn't thinks that any of that's been fouls and she's let the game continue and it's had a nice flow to it. There's the goal kick. Straight to Watling. Now it's Vance. Andrews. All very congested in the far side. Macedonia considering making another change. As Beatty finds Miguel. Her powerful shots wide. I think everybody in the sands expected that to end up in the back of the net. Again, it was good build-up play. It really was, and it was, it was uh, McDaniels on the far side, showing really good footwork, and you know, she's moved to the left side, been able to cut in on her right foot, and, and that wasn't far away. Mustafa, making her way across as uh, Georgievska replaces her. It's a right back for a striker. So you'd expect that uh, the captain, I think, is going to be pushed further forward. Usually plays in a more advanced role. Maleska. Nelson. Finds Vance. Less than five to go. Furnace. Furnace again. Here's Andrews. We it. Lifted in, Furnace. There is he. It. An absolutely brilliant cross. Headed home by Gesu. The delivery from Wade was pinpoint. And it's the type of finish we've come to expect from Rachel Furnace. She grabs a second. Northern Ireland do have an eighth. And Gail, it was all about the delivery from Lauren Wade. I just think the timing here from Rachel Furness to make the run in. Because it's so easy to get offside there. And what a finish. The delivery, delivery makes it. Staying on side, as you say. And at the back post. Headed home. And that really comes down to experience, you know, she takes a wee step back before she moves forward, just keep herself on side. And again, always brave to put her head on, on things that most people wouldn't put their foot. And she finishes it so nicely. Furnace, now she's in a hat trick. And you can see the Northern Ireland bench still demanding energy from their players Miguel has dropped back in that pocket on so many occasions to pick up possession and just change the angle to closing down from McDaniel straight to Hussein the substitute though and it's easily one back wait goes down it was a fairly robust challenge on the right hand side Good bit there, She's back up on her feet. Oh, Completely God. missed time. Might have a sore cap in the morning. Georgieska. Wonder if Demi Vance fancies, fancies this one. Mm 
Well, it's a difficult angle. Goalkeeper just trying to position the wall in the correct manner. It's one of those ones, Thomas. There's actually loads of space near post. If someone would make a near post run. You can just see Judy Nelson waiting to do that. Instead, it's clipped towards McGill. So many bodies in there. Danger still not away. Now it's Wade forces it goalwards. Simone McGill won't quite come down for her. And Furness, I think, is going to have to recycle it. No. She puts it back in. And it's cleared by the captain, Maleska. Is there going to be a grand finale? We're into the final minute. McGill. Furness. Not a good delivery. Caitlin McGinn McGinnis uh, got there and well, McDaniel was just behind in acres of space. Eleven on Thursday, eight this evening. As time ticks down, we await the fourth official to raise her board. Two additional minutes. Kerry beating. Keeps it in play. Is there time for one last attack? Northern Ireland have a throw in in the far side. Andrews under pressure, unable to pick out a team yet. North Macedonia just taking their time with the throw in. Yeah, the instructions from the bench is to slow it down, and they certainly don't want to they can see another one later on in the game. Well, they've been battered here. Here's Burns. Nelson. Caitlin McGinnis left it. There was no one in behind. As the seconds tick down, the fans are in full voice. They certainly enjoyed their experience. And why not? Eight goals for the home side. There'll be plenty of selfies and signatures to come on a night when Northern Ireland got the job done. Furness to McGill. Back to the record goal score. Nice. Nelson. I doubt she's had an easier night at the office at international level. But it's still been very professional. We've played the two minutes. Will the referee allow one more attack? We it. Plays in the danger area, and there is the goal. It's Kerry Beatty. Her first at this level, and it's come deep in injury time. Northern Ireland do have a ninth, and it's Kerry Beatty, the substitute, who forced it home from close range. 20 goals over two games, and four days. It's been a week and a year to remember for Northern Ireland. Ruthless in front of goal. And up to second in the group, Gail. You can't ask for much more. You certainly cannot. And that goal couldn't be happier for Kerry Beatty. I think it came off her shin at the end. And um, you just see uh, what it meant to the Northern Ireland players when they know like the first time you score a goal for your country, it's amazing. And you've seen the celebrations. A teenager who's going to have a big, big future within this squad, Kerry Beatty. Rachel Furness became the record goal scorer in a Northern Ireland shirt this evening. Northern Ireland's number 10 grabbed a double on a night when Northern Ireland were vastly superior. 
to their opponents, North Macedonia. Two for Fernie, three for McGuinness. And also, crucially, another clean sheet for this squad who, who will go into those games in April full of confidence, knowing that if they can get a result against Austria away, they're right in the hunt for that second spot. Yeah, they are. They see that Austria game as a cup final. You know, they'll really be targeting it. You know, that all uh, everything will be focused on that and, and getting that result away from home. And, and, you know, it just makes the group so much more interesting um, now that uh, we're, we're in second place. What plays you most tonight? I think probably the different goal scores. You know, uh, Kirsten McGuinness gets a hat trick. Uh, Furness does her usual, um, you know, getting, getting two goals. But I think the consistency overall, you know, from minute one till the end, you know, Northern Ireland came with a game plan. Uh, is flexible in being able to slot players in, in in different positions and again and getting the correct result. And he wanted goals and he got goals. And I think he's going to have a wonderful Christmas. You look at some of the players who didn't play tonight Chloe McCarran, Cara Hamilton, Nadine Caldwell. Have you ever known a more competitive Northern Ireland squad? No, and I think we've talked about it before, you know, uh, when you get your opportunity, you have to take it because there's so many players on the bench, so many players that are not here, you know. We didn't even mention Sam Kelly just coming back from injury as well. And so there's, there's, there's so many players to, to be in contention. And I think that's what's really pushed this squad forward, that the fact that he has depth now to pick from. Sweet Caroline being sung around Seaview. Kenny Shield is almost 30 years in management. It was a journey that started for Tobermore and his 30th season, he's going to end up managing at a major tournament. That's all to come in 2022, but 2021 has certainly been a fantastic year for this group of players. Second in the group, heading to the Euros, and crucially as well, Gail, extending that unbeaten competitive home record here. Let's look back at some of the key moments from this game. Again, this moment, Miguel involved in everything that happens, all good Northern Ireland, but first and again, she just shows her quality time and time again, you know, to be able to, to place that in the far corner, and you can just see how much it means to her. Northern Ireland were up and running thanks to that Kirsty McGuinness effort. Took ownership of the situation and fired home to set Northern Ireland on their way. That was the opener, it seems, such a long time ago. In the 11th minute, the home side were dominant throughout the evening. But had to wait for a second. When it arrived, it was it was pretty special, Gail. It really was. And again, we talked about it before, you know, sometimes when you get a goal, your next one seems to come pretty quick, and it does the same for Rebecca Holloway. Long way from goal. But a sweet, sweet finish. Has really grown in a role, Rebecca Holloway. And with strikes like that, she's sure to become a fan favourite over the next few months. It's pretty much been a permanent fixture since forcing her way into the squad. Julie Nelson again involved. Bravery from Miguel who led the line brilliantly throughout. And Rachel Furness with that all important 37th goal. A record breaker once more. Yeah. Just over the years, he's just shown so much quality and maturity now. And you we were talking about it earlier in the game when she was talking to Kenny during the pitch and, you know, taking the instructions in. And, you know, I know I've said it before in commentary, she's starting her coaching badges and she's going to be a phenomenal coach when she finishes playing. But hey, long may her playing days last uh, because she is true quality for Northern Ireland. And a banner with Furness, Greenwood Army. Perfectly on cue, right in front of her celebrations. There was another one to come before halftime. McGuinness spotted the goalkeeper in disarray, and her left foot did the rest. Yeah, and I'm sure all her Cliftonville teammates and management there is just knowing the quality. She does that week in and week out for them, and she's just got it. You know, she's got those tools in her locker, and 
It was great vision just to see. She saw, she looked up, she seen the run of Wade, but she saw the keeper backpedaling and was able to put it in the far corner. So four at half time. Northern Ireland pushed and pushed for a fifth at the start of the second. And it arrived courtesy of McGuinness again, completing the hat trick. Laid on the plate though by Miguel, and let's not forget about the role that Judy Nelson played with that pass. Yes, and again, you know, 122 caps, you know, for Julie Nelson, and to have the vision just to be able to slot it in. But of course, he'll not score an easier one than that. There, she's just reminding people. That's three. Northern Ireland were up to five, and then almost instantly, that became six. McGill did brilliantly once more and the ball across was finished by Holloway have Northern Ireland on earth yet another goal scorer yeah I think the position that she takes herself you know, up and in she was able to adjust her feet as the ricochet comes in just to touch it in first time and again you know she's proved her worth in the left side and you know coming into the midfield again just adjust her feet there and taps it home excellent finish Wade the provider Northern Ireland dominant the one thing missing perhaps was a goal though for Simone McGill had worked tirelessly throughout the evening picked it up just outside the penalty area and showed her class and the goal just has everything like inside the foot outside of the foot gets her head up there you go makes the goalkeeper move and just puts it in the far corner Northern Ireland's number nine with her 21st at this level and a standing career that shows no signs of slowing down. I certainly just don't want to be giving Rachel Furness that amount of room in the midfield and North Macedonia do and she's able to conduct that. Just the play happening here. Furness started the move and also managed to get in the end of Wade's cross. Heading home for Northern Ireland's eighth. All about the delivery from Wade. And we've just come to expect finishes like that from Rachel Furness. You see at this angle here, Thomas, she just takes a wee step back. There she goes and then moves forward, keeps herself on side, watches the ball. And what a finish. The experienced players had found the net and got on the score sheet once again but there was still time deep deep in injury time for Northern Ireland ninth and it came courtesy of young Kerry Beatty a substitute eager to open her international account as she bundled it home from close range a striker's finish a predator's finish from someone who's expected to play a key key role in this squad in the coming years. Yeah, you can just tell what it what it means to her. You know, gets herself in a good position here, attacks the ball. It might head off her shin, Thomas, I'm not sure, but I doubt she'll care. <laughs> She's been prolific at club level with Glentor in this season. Winning plenty of silverware there. And she's got a goal here at Save You. Thank you very much to Gail. Thank you very much to our production team of Margaret O'Hare, Sarah McGlinchey and Gary McCutcheon. It's been another Northern Ireland victory, up to second in the group after an unforgettable 2021. Final score here at Save You, Northern Ireland 9, North Macedonia 0.